Hello viewers, we're so glad uh, to come into your home this evening and you must have been watching the promos about family time today. Well, this is our first show that we're coming into your home and I'd like to introduce myself to you. My name is May Victor and this is my husband. My name is Victor C. Victor and we are happy to finally be debuting on this show. So we're going to uh, go a little further to explain to you and let you into our lives and to, to explain to you who we are. Who are we really and how did we meet? Uh, you know, because this is family show. So we ask that you bring, invite your friends, text your friends, e if, uh, e email your friends and let them know that the show is on air right now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tell you who we are. Yes, we are married. We are husband and wife. And we've been married for the last 22 years. So in technical sense, we're bringing 44 years of experience in marriage. If we were going, if we were going to college all these years, we would be professors, probably retired professors. So we're going to be sharing nuggets that we learned all these years. When we met in college, we were, it wasn't first love, love at first sight. We met became friends. From that friendship, we built it into love. And finally, we got married. And that has held our marriage up till now. Wonderful. And we also want to share with you, because somebody say, is, think, is probably thinking, 22 years married to the same man and to the same woman. Wow. So we, we want to share with you certain secrets that has helped us over the years. The, some of the reasons why we haven't killed ourselves up till now. So we're going to share with you, there are some things, there are some secrets, there are some nuggets that has held us up together for 22 years. And we would like to share those with you. Yeah, evening. talking about killing ourselves. Well, we sure have tried sometimes. We just didn't go through with it. We started, one thing that has helped us is that God has been the center of our relationship. We have made God in and out. We've stayed with God and he's been the principal actor, the director, and the president of our life. And that has transcended into whatever we did. So it has helped us in marriage knowing that as Christians, we are accountable to God for whatever we did. Another thing that helped us, I had mentioned earlier on, was that our relationship started in friendship. And we've made all effort to build on that foundation of friendship. So if you are married, or if you're about to be married, and you're not friends with your spouse, it will behoove you to, to develop that friendship. Even if you're not now, you can make friends with your spouse and build on that. The last thing, of course, that helped us is that we surrounded ourselves with the right people. It's called association. First, our peers were people who liked what we like, who were going to where we were going as human beings. We did not associate with those who despised marriage. We associated with those who encouraged marriage. So our peers helped us. The next group of people that helped us were our mentors. It is good to have a mentor in marriage, someone you look up to as a model of marriage that you want to build your own relationship after. So God helped us, we chose the right people, they motivated us, they encouraged us. When we had issues, we went back to them for encouragement and for direction. That's wonderful. You know, some, somebody's watching us now and wondering, well, I'm just here, just me and my husband or just me and my wife. How do I get this association that you're talking about? Do I just get them from the work environment? Do I get them from the stores? Of how do I get a group of people that I can associate with, just like you said earlier that it helped us? Could you shed a little more light on that? You know, the Bible says that he who walks with the wise will be wise. Uh, so you find people that are going where you're going. How do you find them? You find them in churches. If you belong to any particular church, that would be a good place to make friends and associate with people that would help you. Why? 
because you share the same principles, you share the same beliefs, you share that you are under the same covering. So make friends, find people that you hang out with in the church. If you want your marriage to be solid, it will not behoove you to find people that you hang out with in the club. People in the club do not encourage marriage. That's right. So then the next one is the mentors. And we know that mentors helped us a whole lot and uh, to get to this point. So, and then someone is also asking or trying to inquire, how do I get a mentor? Is a mentor, are you a mentor because you've been married for 50 years, 20 years, 15 years? Or how does one qualify and how does one choose a mentor? Yes, mentorship is not by years of marriage or by years of life. No, no, no. You cannot give what you don't have. So you have to find someone that has what you're looking for so that you will build upon what they would give you. If I was looking for a mentor, I probably would also look, go back to my church. Why? Because in your church, you're able to observe the person close, up close and personal. You're also able to analyze that person and you believe that what you believe is what that person also believes. But if you're having problem with that, I would mind going to my pastor and saying, and we are looking for a mentor to mentor us in marriage. Your pastor may know what you don't know. He may be able to assign somebody and say, talk to these people, they will be able to mentor you. That's, that's great. You know, uh, like you talked about the friendship factor. Oh, wow. You know, earlier in the intro, we had uh, mentioned uh, earlier that we, had three, we have three children and two are off to college, one is still at home. It's like the nest is getting empty as the years go by. Oh, yes. But you know, the friendship that we cultivated over the years has really, really helped us. I mean, the, the nest could really be empty, but this unit is still intact. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. So I encourage you couples, get together with each other, husband to wife and cultivate that intimate relationship that regardless of where you are, it's both of you together. It helps you in the very long run. You know, statistics has shown that the first five years of your marriage is the most dangerous time to be separated, to get divorced, for things to be messed up. The next time in the phase of your marriage that is also dangerous is the time that the next becomes empty. Because all these years, husband and wife have focused on raising the children. The children has been the binding factor that is bringing them together. And now the children are gone. There is no more reason to hang out together. That's why you must build your relationship on friendship. So that when the children are gone, the friendship factor will continue to hold you together. If you're not friends with your spouse, you're cheating yourself. You're not enjoying one of the cardinal points, one of the main reasons that God set up marriage. And we don't want to cheat ourselves either. So we hope that you're going to write us or call us and say, you know what? We put into practice what you guys have discussed on that broadcast and it helped you. Because we know that it will definitely help you. And the God factor, you cannot do without in your relationship. Hello viewers, my name is May Victor and I'm here to introduce to you the, a brand new book that we have uh, written and this book, the name is Together Forever, God's Master Plan for Your Marriage. Whatever you are, at any level you are, if you're single, if you're married, if you're divorced, you have something in this book that will help to lift you up and focus you in the right direction. It's only 158 pages and it's so easy to read. Before you know it, you're done with it and you will grasp all the nuggets there. It only sells for $11.99. So go ahead and grab the book. We're on Amazon.com. If you type in Together Forever, you're going to find the book. And also, if you want to get it from our website, it's www.togetherforever.org. Go ahead and get it. You will not regret it. All right. Uh, talking about the, the God factor, you know, we've, we've mentioned the God factor helping us in our relationship. And uh, somebody might be watching and wondering, 
what are they talking about God factor? What is really the God factor that helped us? Yes, the God factor means God being center, left and right in your relationship. When you have disagreements, you look onto the scriptures to settle those disagreements. Making God the beginning of your day, rebuilding your altar. I think that's where it starts from. If you have a family, you're not having a quiet time. Quiet time means time that husband and wife pray and study the scripture and bring in their children and teach them the ways of God so that the family knows that God is the center of whatever you're doing. That's the God factor. If things are not in accordance with the scriptures, they are not done in the family. In my own household, the God factor means that when we lack, we look unto God for sustenance. When we receive, we give God thanks. When we are in need, we look unto God. That's the God factor. That's wonderful, and that is so true, because it has helped us over, over the years. And another issue that has helped us that he mentioned earlier is the friendship factor. And somebody is watching us at this time and wondering, I have not been friends with my spouse, and we've been married for 10 years or 5 years or 3 years or 1 year, and you're wondering at this point, how can I cultivate this friendship factor that you're talking about. Some of you might think it's too late. No, it's not. And we will share with you how you can do that. Yes, you can start any time. The Bible says that he who desires to be friends must make himself friendly. You can start building rapport. If you're not calling your husband before, start calling your husband. Start testing. In our family, I call my wife more than I call anybody. If I have a hot news, hot, hot information, guess who I'm going to call first? My wife. We'll talk. We text. We Even when we're in the house, I'm in the home office, she's in the bedroom, she's texting me, we're calling each other. Our children knows that that's how you develop friendship. You go out, have date nights to build on that. When you're going out to a party, you drive one car. When you're going to a meeting, you drive one car. Those are periods of bonding, as opposed to husband enters car B, wife enters car B, car A. One lives in the morning, the other one lives in the evening. When you do things together, you build friendship. And one of the viewers, one of the dangers that you want to avoid in your home is the danger of the man having his guy friends and the, the woman having her girlfriends and both of you cultivating friendship outside the home that are even closer than the friendship of the union. The friendship of the union ought to take precedence over every other friendship that you have. Uh, and, and at this point, we want to, we, we've shared with you who we are personally and what has helped us. Now, the Lord has given us a ministry and it's based on this ministry that we're bringing this show to you. And the name of our ministry is Together Forever Marriage Ministry. And we want to tell you what we do, or what kind of vision that the Lord has given us in this ministry. We want to share that with you too. Yes, and uh, there are four point factors that we are going to focus on, or that we focus on in this ministry. The first one is to reveal marriage as the cornerstone of God's plan. If you really look at it, God created the world and then he created Adam. And he handed Adam the key of his estate. So Adam and Eve were supposed to manage God's kingdom until the fall. And that same plan is still in place. God wants husband and wife to be the centerpiece of his kingdom. Because if the house is intact, the church will be intact. If the church is intact, the community will be intact. If the community is intact, the nation will be intact. Amen. And that's the number one thing. The other thing we want to do is to equip husband and wife so that they will enjoy their marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not for you to inveil. Mm -hmm. It's for you to enjoy it. There are things that you can do 
so that marriage will be fun. And those are the things we're going to be bringing to you. We also want to help you to leverage the two-ness, the oneness that you are, husband and wife working as a team towards a common goal. You know, there's something that the scripture says in Ecclesiastes. It says that two are better than one. Because if one falls, the other one will pick him up. For if they fall, one will lift him up. I'm reading now. It says two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their work. For if one falls, the other one will pick him up. But woe to him who is alone. When he falls, for he has no one to help him out. And that is true. The fact that your marriage should give you advantage in life. It should not be a disadvantage. It should not pull you down. If husband and wife will learn to pull their resources together, they will go places. So we're going to be bringing nuggets that will help us so that we work as a team. Teamwork is very important in marriage. And that's why a lot of people do not get to their destination when they ought to because they are lacking the teamwork. When you can pull your resources together, husband and wife, you will achieve more. Singly, you will achieve some, but together, you achieve more. So we're going to be bringing a nugget to you that will help you to build a formidable team. And so we ask that you give us 30 minutes of your time every week, same time and same station. And we know your lives will never be the same again. Hello viewers, my name is May Victor and I am here to introduce to you the, a brand new book that we have uh, written and this book, the name is Together Forever, God's Master Plan for Your Marriage. Whatever you are, at any level you are, if you're single, if you're married, if you're divorced, you have something in this book that will help to lift you up and focus you in the right direction. It's only 158 pages and it's so easy to read. Before you know it, you're done with it and you will grasp all the nuggets there. It only sells for $11.99. So go ahead and grab the book. We're on Amazon.com. If you type in Together Forever, you're going to find the book. And also, if you want to get it from our website, it's www.togetherforever.org. Go ahead and get it. You will not regret it. Our vision is also to build and rebuild marriages. If your marriage is good, we want to make it better. We will give you tools that would improve on what you already have. But if you're like most people who are struggling with their marriage, we are here to give you tools in those areas that you're struggling. Whether the issue is money management, we will share nuggets that will help us to be effective in managing the money that God has given us. We believe in oneness. Oneness transcends everything. Your money, your bedroom, and everything you do. So we're going to be sharing that in building your marriage. If the problem is communication, as is in most marriages because if you get communication in place you have other things in place if we know how to talk money right we will communicate money right so we would also be expounding on that so whatever the challenge is that is weighing your marriage down we will be able to share nuggets that would help you build it and rebuild those areas that is falling apart. And if your marriage has completely broken down, you are divorced, you're separated, that road or that journey has ended, and you're looking to build another, we will be working with you to prepare you to be better placed to do the next one the right way. Okay. And you know what? I know somebody is listening now and just, you're just watching us and wondering, well, I'm not married. I don't even have a man. And I don't have a woman. So why am I watching this? And you're about to touch that dial and turn it off. But just give us a minute. And we're going to explain to you who all that we're targeting. Even in this show. This show that will be coming to you every Monday at 7.30 p.m. The same station. We need to discuss with you. We need to share with you who are within our scope that we can reach. So it might be you. 
So don't touch that dial. We're not done yet. Yes, that's right. This is a family show. Being a family show, it reaches all the dimensions of the family. If you're single, we're going to be sharing principles that would help you through your singlehood to enjoy it while you are single and also to prepare you for the next phase of your life. So we will be sharing that. And if you're married, as I said before, we will be giving us a lot of information that would help us to enjoy our marriage. Even for parents and grandparents, we have been able, by the grace of God, to parent three kids, two of them in college. We will share nuggets that would help us to better have a, to have a better relationship with these kids. All of us are suffering from cultural issues. Our kids are born in America. We are from outside America. We want to raise them somewhere. The society wants them to be somewhere. And the kids are thrown all over the place. We will share nuggets that will help us to manage it so that we will understand our kids better and they will understand us better. You know, someone is probably watching and someone might be a single person right now watching us. I'm just wondering, well, I'm just hearing about marriage, 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 couple, couple, couple. And they're, they're, they, they, they're saying in their heart at this time, my problem is just to find the right person. So what would you say is that person's uh, uh, a chance? What chance do they start, start in this program that would help them to want to tune in every Monday at 7 o'clock to watch this program. You know, my pastor used to say something, and he still does. He says that prayerful preparation does what? Prevents poor performance. Yes. So as you prepare for the next phase, if you're looking to get married, you want to be watching. You want to pick nuggets to choose the right person. You don't know who the right person is. Your ideas now may be that guy that drives a Hummer or that guy that lives in a big house. That may be the right person that you have, but that may not be God's idea. Once we share through these principles, we'll find out what makes a man the right person. If it's a prospect, if it what God says, is it who God wants for you? We will be sharing principles that would help you make that decision. And, uh, you know, you might also be divorced. And you're thinking, well, I'm already divorced. I'm through with it, you know. But the point is, we have a program. We have shows for you, even in your state. Because let's face it, reality, it, it could happen sometimes that marriage breaks. Mm -hmm. That is not a, 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 a prayer for any one of our viewers. But we cannot overlook the fact that we live in the real earth. And it could happen that there's a point where marriage breaks. We will bring across to you nuggets that helps that will help you to begin again. Your situation is not over until you say it's over. You can begin anew. You can begin again. Our God is a God of restoration. So what, what about the parents, like grandparents? I mean, that, that might want to watch the program that are thinking, well, you know, maybe they're widowed and they're dealing with their grandchildren, do they have anything in this, in this show that oh, can yes. benefit Oh yes, they have a lot to learn because your kids come to you for advice. Your kids look up to you. If you're a grandparent, your children come back to you for advice. And even if they don't come, there may be situations where you want to give them advice on what to do, the mistakes you've made, or what the scripture says. So we will be sharing some of the things we'll be sharing here would also help you in advising your kids. The Bible says that the kids we raise are godly offsprings. The idea behind it is that we grow up, we grow up and live even as godly people and hand over the baton to our children so that they will carry the legacy of worship and carry the legacy of praise, the legacy of knowing who God is and the legacy of the fear of God that we have. So there you have it, viewers. It's all encompassing, and we are not leaving no stone unturned. So we welcome you every Monday evening to join us. We have different kinds of programs, 
or different kind of topics that we're going to be sharing. Every once in a while, we could have guest artists. We will talk about communication. We will talk about intimacy. We will talk about how to use money and how money can bring you together. Money is a tool. It's also a tool to, uh, to, to bring you together in intimacy. We will talk about the in-laws and the outlaws. Hopefully we don't have any outlaws, but we will talk about those. We will talk about different areas you can call in, the number on the screen, or you can email us your suggestions, you know, things that you want us to discuss, and we will also visit those issues. We, all, we only ask that you give us 30 minutes of your time every Monday evening at 7 p.m., the whole family involved in it and let us roll this thing together we believe that we can make it together in that right yes we can make it together if we invest in it whatever we focus on grows that's a natural law whatever you focus on if you focus on your marriage and invest in it it will improve but if you ignore if you ignore it it will continue to go down so we want to encourage you on this show that you join us every Monday as we share what God has put in our hearts. Yeah. Our homes have taken a very serious beating from the enemy lately. A lot of things have gone wrong in the homes. And we are rising up and saying enough is enough. It is about time that we reclaim our joys. We reclaim our peace. We reclaim our stability. Time will be gone when a single person will look at a married uh, couple and say, well, I'm so glad I'm better than them. No, the Bible cannot be broken. If the Bible says that two are better than one, it needs to be so in all ramification. So join us. Let's ride together. And we know that you will be blessed. Thank you. God bless you.